But first, the Liberal Party room have, in deciding to oppose constitutional entrenchment of a so-called voice to Parliament, averted disaster. Had it decided to endorse the Albanese government's plan for constitutional entrenchment of a voice to Parliament, it would have condemned the party to the wilderness for the long term, for being unwilling to stand firmly for anything. But by the decision to defend the liberal value of the equality of all Australians before the law, it has shown it is capable of being decisive, willing to make a hard argument and prepared to act on the basis of the fundamental principles on which the party was founded. And importantly, it shows it is prepared to offer an alternative way forward that avoids repeating the errors that have largely caused much of the hardship that is experienced by the approximately 20% of Aboriginal people today who are targeted by efforts to close the gap in life outcomes between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. He was right when he said this on Tuesday. When you go to those communities, they're not in favour of a voice. They want practical outcomes. They want assistance with housing. They want assistance with maternal health. They want assistance with rehabilitation. And I want to help those people. I want those outcomes to change as quickly as possible by listening to those local voices. Spot on, Mr Dutton. Much of the hardship that has been endured by this cohort of Aboriginal Australians is experienced by those in rural and remote places. And it's the product not of intergenerational trauma about the colonisation experience, as some would suggest, but instead of well-meaning political interventions that were based on the notion of Aboriginal exceptionalism. That's the idea um, that there's something fundamentally different about Aboriginal people, that they're not the same on the inside as the rest of us. If you ask me, that's more than a little bit racist. It was always an error to treat Aboriginal people as though they don't have the same fundamental needs, aspirations and flaws as every other Australian. And yet that exceptionalist approach is exactly what Mr Albanese's voice model would entrench. A near permanent, inflexible and judicially enforceable mechanism for keeping Aboriginal people separated from wider Australian society and to lock in policies that have done and continue to do great harm to the most vulnerable people in Aboriginal communities. It would be a disaster. The Liberal Party have instead offered a more flexible, practical and grassroots way of getting the input of Aboriginal people without accepting permanent and constitutional division. It keeps the door open to, for, and it aspires to, that moment when the gap is actually closed. And instead of pitching for national grandstanding by an Aboriginal elite, it caters to the different local cultures and concerns without throwing sand in the gears of government and commerce. And very importantly, it avoids the lawyer's picnic that would come from a constitutional right to make submissions to the executive government in the manner that's proposed by Labor. Now, that overreach has the perverse effect of giving the High Court's intelligent but unelected bench the right to review and decide upon a large and new cohort of Cabinet-level executive decisions. It's far more appropriate that the buck stop with people who will be held accountable to Australians at regular elections. There was a very real risk that after losing the Aston by-election, the Liberal Party could have been spooked by the plethora of media commentary from people who would never vote for them, suggesting that Aston was proof of the need to capitulate to every cause of the Labor Green left. Take, for example, Michael Turbull. Button basically backed by the Murdoch media, backed by Rupert Murdoch himself, as we know, uh, pushed, sought to overthrow my leadership in the uh, melee that followed. Morrison emerged as leader, but the party then started moving further and further to the right, and it has gone backwards in Victoria ever since. But let's face it. If the Liberal Party were to take Mr Turnbull's advice, it would not make the Liberals more electable. It would lose its existing voters, 60% of whom firmly oppose the proposal for constitutional change, 
without replacing them. A voter for whom these totemic issues of the left are important is unlikely to switch their allegiance when there are other offerings in the market that will do it with more enthusiasm and less moderation. There is no doubt that the Liberal Party is in a difficult period as it seeks to rebuild for the future. But the recipe for success remains tried and true. The values articulated in Menzies' time of small government, strong families and civil society, equality before the law, fundamental freedoms and free enterprise are as good as they always were. They just need to be re-articulated with courage in the face of a culture that has, at least in part due to long-term liberal timidity, embraced the identity politics and postmodern nonsense of the activists and the academy. And as former Prime Minister Tony Abbott and Victorian Dan Tehan said this week, there needs to be a power of work done in the policy space to translate these timeless values into the policy that makes it real, tangible and applicable to everyday life, especially for difficult demographics like people who are millennials and younger. The beauty of the Liberal approach to the referendum is that it provides a permission structure for those who fear being labelled a racist to vote no without being accused of lacking care for Aboriginal Australians. Indeed, the Libs' proposal is more likely to succeed in addressing the issues on the ground. Mr Albanese's push has always lacked any evidence that it will be effective. It sought to manipulate Australians' substantial goodwill towards Aboriginal people while simultaneously threatening to call anyone who opposes them a racist. But now that the Liberals have settled on a position that's both principled and practical, they must robustly explain it and ensure the on-the-ground logistics are in place to turn this from a mere intellectual exercise into a political win. If they can pull that off, it will do what is right for this country and sustain a body blow to Mr Albanese's leadership.